And we're back. And I have yeah. appeared with a Steve. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hello, everyone. Um, Steve, would you do me the honor of introducing yourself and telling these lovely people... Maybe not how amazing you are, because I'm happy to do that, but who you are, at least. <laughs> okay, so who am I? Uh, well, I'm Steve. I've been uh, directing cinematics uh, for quite some time now, like 17, 18 years, I think. Um, I started working for Quantic Dream. Uh, they're doing like very uh, narrative-driven uh, games, like um, Heavy Rain or Beyond Two Souls. So I worked on that, and then I just moved around a little bit. Worked for Ubisoft, worked for uh, CD Projekt on The Witcher 3, and uh, then I moved to London to work on a very small project, but very dear to me. That's where I met Neil, who's uh, playing Mihail. Uh, not Mihail, sorry, Nikolai. And um, then I moved to Japan for... Uh, Resident Evil 8, oh, uh, sorry, 3, <laughs> and also 8, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's out of, the cat is out of the bag now. So well, I, I guess I don't have that. to ask I that also, question. I also did work on the Resident Evil 8, um, but yeah, I moved uh, there uh, mostly for Resident Evil 3, um, and I'm still living here because I really love the country. Uh, I mean, you've been there, uh, Nicole, so you know how, how crazy and nice Japan is. We're, we're pretty crazy about uh, Japan in general. Um, so yeah, chat, in case you were wondering, Steve has an incredible resume. Uh, he's been in the video game industry for years and years. Uh, he truly knows behind the scenes because he is, I mean, he works with actors, he works with all of the different game teams, he's big on communication between everyone and, and is a really big part of how the narrative kind of comes to life in all of these games that you love. Um, Neil and I have vouched over the past few weeks uh, how much credit we give to Steve for just our experience, our performances, and everything that we've gotten to learn from him. So I feel incredibly grateful that he would come on and share a little bit of love and wisdom with us. Um, and also, it's super early in the morning for him, so let's just give it him is. a holler. Yeah, because like he, seven. he got up really early <laughs> to come be on this stream. Good morning. Um, Good morning. That being said, ask lots of questions, keep donating, uh, because all donations are heading to BLM and the Innocence Project. And Steve, we are going to probably jump around in the game. I don't have many very good saves in here, but I wanted to take us closer to the end, just because I haven't played that um, as much. So, full disclaimer, I haven't played the game. I know, I know, I know. It's just I don't play the games I'm working on. It's this weird thing uh, I have where I kind of want to have the idea of how perfect it is in my mind. Uh, that idea that comes from the shooting and, and working on it. And uh, so I don't want to break that. <laughs> so I usually don't play the games I'm working on. Uh, I did saw a lot of um, um, the cutscenes online and they look, they look amazing. I also played a very early version of the, of the build of the game while I was working on it. Uh, like a year ago. Or something I was gonna like say that. he's like I haven't played the game, but he's also probably seen so much of the game that he doesn't have to. Yes, so that's that's, <laughs> that's pretty much why when, when when you're working on the game or on any game, uh, you're like constantly trying testing it. Uh, so yeah, the last thing you want to do when you go back home is just play the game. <laughs> Basically, um, like so work I, have a, I have a question about and, and and I have to say it's a bit of a like I, I, I am a huge fan of the Resident Evil uh, franchise I've played all the Resident Evil games it's probably the first one I'm not playing um, so it's a, it's a bit bittersweet because now I get to work on something I love but at the same time it's kind of like taking away something from me the, the ability to just like enjoy the game for the first time with just like fresh eyes because he knows so, when everything's gonna come yeah. and he's heard us say the lines 700 times <laughs> in 700 different ways that you didn't even get to hear because he was sitting behind the scenes going yeah let's let's tone that down or let's switch that up um <laughs> so he gets some credit for uh 
basically what you what you see in so many ways. Um, I also love chat saying your accent is cute because I definitely <laughs> have long. T- uh, Steve and I have been in wars on accents before. <laughs> We have. So we have yes, fun. sorry about that. I'm, I'm working on it. It's getting better with the with, with the. Don't with you the, dare the... apologize! It is the best <laughs> French accent ever. In case you're wondering, he's French, and he speaks French wonderfully. And whenever he was annoying me, he would never annoy me. But I would ask for my directions in French so that I could just be like, uh huh, uh huh, okay, I got it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, he would direct me in French, and it was a golden day. <laughs> Um, um, Susie, you had a question. I did, yeah. Uh, uh, let me see how I could phrase this. So, Steve, when you play the game, like, is it just like on set? Is it like when people, when the actor does like the motion capture, like, does that data just immediately go into game form, or is that like no? Oh no, 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 no. There's okay. a whole process. That's a long um, process. Yeah. Usually we shoot, um, it takes a few days, weeks or week to get the data back. Then some animators have to work on those data to just like clean them up a little bit. Gotcha. They're in a very rough stage, no, no finger animations, uh, like not much detail. Um, and then we, uh, we work on the rough uh, um, edit place the, um, the virtual cameras uh, and then it gets into the game and people start polishing it like fixing like tiny uh, like problems with the animations um, uh, putting like very good lighting uh, FX uh, VFX sound um, yeah yeah but it also like it, it really depends on the on the project and on the um, uh, the engine you're working with uh so yeah it varies gotcha gotcha he's like the knowledge but i feel like i've gotten so many questions throughout the streaming process that i'm like generally there's just an incredible amount of people <laughs> because that's what i know to be true i'm just like there's there's just a lot of people that know what they're doing who do a lot of very amazing things steve is actually the person that could probably tell you what they do so, uh, if you have those questions, now's the time. Um, all right, so I don't know where in this game I am at all, but clearly I have all of my disposable items <laughs> and an extended barrel without that cool gun. So this is going to wow. be really, really interesting. How oh, okay, you... I see an interesting question here. Are there any things you made for Ari Tree that got cut out? So not only for our retrieval but for like every artistic project there's always stuff that are left on the cutting floor but usually it's way before we actually start shooting um at the like the, the, the when we're writing the script um when they start implementing a rough version of the game without any uh, narrative element uh so yeah there's there's often like a bit of back and forth and i remember like storyboarding whole scenes that um, never made into the game. Uh, but that's not um, uh, unique to uh, this game. It's, it's pretty much every, every game. And I think every uh, artistic project. Yeah, like, are, we, you see, are we allowed you, to ask about what, some of those cutscenes? Yes. Uh, I don't know if I can say okay. it. I would okay. lean towards uh, the side of probably not. Because I okay. remember, yeah, yeah prob- probably not specifics. Um, probably not specifics. I, I, I would say, like, I remember not, I was never as, you know, involved, obviously, as Steve was, but I remember getting, like, a script that actually got all the way through, like, getting sent to the actors, and then they were like, actually, never mind, never mind, never mind, that scene's cut, we're not doing it. Um, just some of the stuff in the beginning, like how it like played out or, or, you know, after the apartment stuff, how you interact with Brad, but just like all of this stuff kind of shifts and changes and it it wasn't like it really got cut out. It just got drastically changed to something else. And and it it may think like, oh, well, so then people don't really know what they're doing and they're just like, 
uh, writing something and hope it sticks. But that's not really the case. It's that um, as when you're not able to play the game, it's kind, kind of difficult to, to know like how uh, the rhythm of the game, the pacing of it, uh, is going to be just by writing uh, the story. So as soon as they're able to have like as soon as they have a playable version of the game, that's where you figure out how oh, you know what this scene might be too long, or oh maybe we do need uh, a specific cutscene here uh, because the, we don't quite really understand the, the stakes um, uh, for that character. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, um, like it's an ever ever evolving uh, process to totally. create a video game up until the end. Which, I mean, it makes a lot, like, like Sue said, on just kind of any creative process, if you think about movies, movies is the easiest way to be like, what, what gets filmed, and then how much the movie changes in the edit, like, how much that changes. With video games, it's interesting because, like, where the editing process happens is throughout the entire game, so, like, you could have some stuff ready and shot, and a script that was there get changed because now they have this new version of what this is going to look like. Whereas a movie, you pretty well shoot everything, do the edit, and then maybe do pickups. It's a little bit more da da da. I feel like the video game stuff is like all of these moving parts at the same time, which is why I'm, I'm always incredibly impressed with the artists that, that are involved with having to deal with all of the moving parts as they come in. Um, that being said, Steve, I'm going to move forward and I'm pretty sure this is the save right before the second to last nemesis fight um so i think we have some nikolai cutscenes here oh um, great that you could give a watch you ready correct me if i'm wrong Susie. i could be totally wrong what in god's name is this place oh yeah i remember that that uh, environment well it looks great it looks awesome check it don't go down i want to trigger cutting i know <laughs> Cool, right? Looks cool. Yeah. Sorry, cool. I had to step away for a second. I love this environment so much. It's so cool. And like cyberpunk. Is so cool. Oh my god, I remember shooting that with Neo. Mm hmm. I remember shooting this with Neo. Yeah. What do we have here? Nikolai, don't! The city needs that vaccine! More than I do. I don't think the wisdom I've been trying to impart on you is getting through. Now I know you can't put a price on life. Can we curse on that uh, uh, stream? But I'm in this business to get yes. hate. <laughs> so let's make a deal. You go down there, battle the nemesis, and I'll recall it all and sell the combat up. Put on a good show, and maybe I don't need the vaccine. Agreed? Makes good. a great villain. Okay. Oh, maybe we can... I think my internet just literally died, so... No idea. Everything just stopped. But we're back now, and it seems all chill. And we'll... Oh, is it crashing again? No? Okay, good. Um, I think we're here. Looks like we're live. Chat? We're back. Okay, great. Uh, sorry? No idea. But I was just saying, as that cutscene ended, I don't know exactly when it cut out, but I was just saying, we, we t um, when Neil and I played through this, we talked about how this scene was done in so many different pieces. We had a stunt team for some of the hanging, which an incredible stunt lady, who we've talked about how awesome... Uh, she was and then how you had to like mold together then me on my knees like holding and looking up people asked did he actually step on your fingers yes but not hard <laughs> oh steve can i hear you can you hear me yes yes it's it's cutting a little bit but yeah it should be good so yeah uh yeah hino-san the, the the stunt woman that uh was doing most of your stunts uh, not all of them. You did some yourself. Hey. Uh, yeah, she was crazy good. Remember, she she just had a baby like two months before or something like that, and then she was just jumping and getting kicked and and falling. We talked uh, about this yeah. in the volume. That that's crazy. 
uh, it's always a pleasure to work with uh, with stunts. It, it really feels it's the part of my job where I feel like I'm a, I'm a kid playing with toys, <laughs> where I'm like, hey, and now the this this character is gonna jump and do a kick, and this character is gonna fall. Can you do that? And they're always the answer is always yes. Um, so yeah, I love that. Uh, maybe we can talk about the process of. Uh, um, Actually, no, let's wait for the cutscene with the, the, the big fight with um, uh, Carlos and Nikolai. Yeah, okay, let's, let's play. Um, last time I played this, I didn't succeed very quickly, so fingers crossed I can do this in one take. Meanwhile, yeah, Susie, okay. if you have any questions from Twitter for Steve, I feel like I might have saw one or two. I do. Why don't do. you chat with Steve for a second and you ignore me while I try to beat this boss? <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, cool. Well... I do. Uh, my first question for you, Steve, uh, comes from Tyler Boyce. Uh, the question is, what do you tend to look for in actors when doing performance capture? What makes their resumes or auditions stand out? Oh, that's a difficult question. It's, um, you tend to know right when the actor enters the room in the audition if it's going to be good or not. <laughs> um, uh, and then it's just a matter of, I don't know, I don't, I, I, I've been trying to, uh, um, like, understand my process when picking up actors, but it's, uh, it's very different, it's very personal, it's a, just a feeling, you know? Obviously, uh, if, if the actor has, has um, uh, like, some experience doing motion capture, that's great, but sometimes you have actors who never, never did any motion capture, but they're uh, amazing. Uh, 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 right from the bat, so uh, I would say I tend to look for people who have a sense of rhythm uh, with their body, so that's something we try uh, during the audition. Um, and often people who have a background in dancing uh, or singing actually um, uh, have that. Uh, and I also try to get nice people. Cause, oh, yeah, because you know what? When, when when you're shooting, it's like usually it's like big chunks of uh, time, like two weeks, four weeks, and you just want to have like like nice people around you. And sometimes there's like some very talented people that are a bit of a uh, like a bit difficult to work with. Look, Steve, and... I get it. Calm down. Is that you, I'm not talking about you, uh, uh, Nicole. Let me um, spot for you. So yeah, so it's a it's a balance act between like trying to find, uh, like trying to listen to your uh, your instincts, um, the expense of the uh, of the the talent, and um, the match with the character. Because sometimes you have like amazing actors that come in, but it's not quite the right match. It's not the voice you have you had in your mind when you're like imagining the character. Um, yeah, so there's no there's no real straight answer. Sorry, it's just uh, like a very intimate process. And on top of that, uh, usually I'm not the only one uh, who's making that decision. There's also like, like producers and like like guys from Capcom um, have a say in that. Um, but usually they listen to me. <laughs> Better. <laughs> oh, and also, also uh, uh, something that I, I often do, I really like to bring back actors that I've already worked with, um, because it's um, we already have like shortcuts in communication, and and I already know what I can I can ask uh, of this specific actor. I, on this project, uh, I brought back Neil, of course, um, and but also. Um, uh, Bill, who's playing um, um, that was uh, Mikhail. Mikhail. Yeah, Mikhail, and, and um, I forgot his name, Doctor Bar, too. Hmm. Um, the one we just saw, um, uh, what was telling uh, on the TV. And yeah. Um, so yeah, I do tend to like. Over the years, I've, I've started building like a like a family of actors around me that I that I like working with. Well, that's and, great. Yeah. Yeah, I could imagine that like uh, for like a remake of a video game, like like Resident Evil Three, uh, 
casting an actor for such an iconic character like Jill or Carlos or whatever, like that that should totally be like a group discussion type thing with like producers at Capcom because they want to get it right. Yeah, and, and and there were some questions about like because this, this this been like other Jills, uh, not in my heart, Nicole. Nicole anyway. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and uh, like on that specific project, since there was the um, the Resident Evil Two uh, um, remake before, and this project shares some characters with Resident Evil Two. Yeah. So, for instance, for uh, uh, Kendo, I didn't have a say. Uh, as to which character we, we would be using for the voice. Yeah. Um, but he's Kendo, he's good, so it wasn't a problem, but yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of a... a little bit of a barrier when it's like, mm. hey, this character was just in another game <laughs> that came out a year before, so... Yeah, you sort of have to like, keep up with that. The consistency of it. I'm just focused. You guys are doing great. I'm just trying to stay alive. Oh, you're doing great too. You got this. <laughs> I do have another question for you, Steve. Okay. From Twitter. Sure, sure. Go ahead. That's where, where I'm here for. <laughs> uh, this one's from Andrew. I got this. It says, Are there any holy shit, they're good moments in the booth or when you're working? with fine actors and actresses. Like, have you ever had any moments where you were just like, whoa? <laughs> like, oh yeah, like, are... all the time, all the time. Um, I, so, I'm, I'm very known for not being, like, overly excited on the set. I mean, maybe you can... <laughs> I'm ready. You say the word and I will tell this story. <laughs> Guys, so, here's how you know you've done a good job on a Steve set. He goes, That'll work. <laughs> and then we move on. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to work on that and be like, more overly excited. But I mean, like... he's honest. Honestly, I love it because there are other directors that are like, oh, oh, that was wow. Yeah, that was so good. And we're like, I mean, it was an effort sound. Sure. Um, so like there's so many different like directing styles and you kind of get used to whoever you're working with. So you start to learn if Steve goes, that'll work. That you're just like yeah, we did it. Um, the highest grade. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, I mean, I mean, it, it, directing a shoot is like it demands a lot of focus and a lot of energy. So I feel like just spending that that energy, just being like overly vocal, is just another not a good use of my energy. So oh, maybe that's why. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're focused. Any you're focused. More... All right, guys, I gotta stay alive. Sorry, keep talking, you're doing great. Um, what, there's, there's zombies in the middle of the arena? Yep, they come they're in between. Okay, I'll try not to give up. Um, so, sorry, I don't know if I really answered the question, though. Did I? Yeah, basically that was your chance to compliment us, but you don't have to. Oh yeah, yeah, what, no, what, no, yeah. Was there any, uh, yeah, we, yeah. Basically, like, when they like I those die. scenes where where they work as a group, uh, and where like everything flows together like really well, that's when you're like, oh yeah, I did a good job bringing those people together. Um, and there was definitely. Did you die? I died. But I just saw that Jeff Shine is in the chat. Oh, is, is Jeff he? here? Jeff, do you wanna do you wanna stream? I'll add you. It might take a second, but I'll totally add you if you wanna oh, come. Yeah. On. Hey Jeff, what's up? You let me know. Nicole, you should let me play this game. I'll I just mean, screen share my game to you. Can you? Yeah, I have a I have the scene that Steve wants right now. Like how, I have it. How do we in how do we file. do that? How do I how do I do that? I'm happy I, to let you play because it's so hard to talk and this is very interesting. I have to screen share. Um and then you have to put, you have to make my window somehow. The back like, window? Yeah, I don't know if that's possible. I'm a, I'm a fan. I think what's gonna happen is everything's gonna get a little bit wacky. Uh, did Jeff say yes to coming on? Either way, I would love Susie to. Yeah, I, I wanna, I wanna. You get want in, my in question mark? <laughs> Here, I'll just text him. Jeff, you wanna come stream? Are you around? 
Is your hair looking pretty? Um, yes, but while we discuss about that and wait back to hear on Jeff and possibly have Susie play so that we can get through it. What? Um, Steve, I will let you finish. I think the initial question was, is there ever a moment in the booth where you think to yourself, dang, they're very good. And if not, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, I did say all the time. I know. All the time. I know, I'm teasing uh, you. you. Okay. Okay, so you, know, so you know, there's like, there's a lot of lines. I mean, Resident Evil is a bit campy. It's a campy um, uh, um, franchise. And sometimes... Uh, when you read the script, you're like, oh my God, that line might be a tad cheesy. And I'm not sure it's going to work. But then you guys always find ways to make those lines work. And then they become uh, iconic. Uh, so yeah, that's where I get surprised. And I'm like, whoa, they're really good. <laughs> yeah, just working with yeah. some potential. Like, um, like you, 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 you were streaming with Sterling, and that line, you ballsy motherfucker. <laughs> I wasn't sure about it. And I think in the end, it works really great. I love it. Yep. Because he just, like, makes it work. I have an update. I definitely don't have a save file that's in the end of the game. So <laughs> have to watch play it at lightning speed. Which I can I can also do that too. So okay, I'm gonna really... try I'm gonna try this one more time. <laughs> Jeff said yes, he needs five minutes, and then we could probably have him come on and just chat as well. Steve, that might be fun. You game. How do I skip this? Uh, press start and then square. Or options. Yep, got it. <laughs> Whatever. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. I'm gonna try this again. Um. We had any donations? We did! I totally- here, wait, there's a donation. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm catching up, guys. I have another question for Steve from oh, good. Twitter. Chronic so. Juliana said, Welcome to the stream, Steve. My question is, what kind of scenes do you enjoy directing the most? For example, things that are more tense and action-focused, or maybe ones that are more emotional and character-focused? <laughs> I okay, want to hear what he so... answers this, because I also have an opinion about what his favorite scenes are. <laughs> How do you? No, you. Okay, so this it's is all you. both. But, um, so when I was younger, and when I, like at the beginning of my career, I really enjoyed all the action -y scenes, and, uh, because it's just, like, immediate fun, you know, you just have people getting, like, into fights, running, jumping, um, and it's also easier to direct, I think, but, uh, as I get older and more experienced, I really enjoy working with the actors, so, um, like dialogue heavy uh, scenes, if well written, that's what I enjoy the most. Because that's where you really get to see the work of the actors. You really get to see like their craft. And I'm getting more and more interested in that. That answers your question. Yeah, just like a lot of like scenes that deal with ranges of emotions and stuff like that. That yeah, like a focus of like one thing, Jill, like action. You? And sometimes, and sometimes you you get surprised. Like a scene Let on the paper me. doesn't look like that interesting, but then um, on the set you find like uh, like a nice little twist, uh, maybe with um, the way you stage it. Uh, so uh, staging is like when you like where you put the, the actors in the in in the in the environment or uh, maybe you tweak the line with the actors and suddenly the scene like lit up. Um, so yeah, mostly I think working with the actors is what I enjoy the most. Uh, I'm curious to, to uh, hear what uh, Nico has to say about that because he <laughs> seemed to have an opinion. But I think they just told me what tank he was behind, things. but I wasn't no listening. Way. Number eight, he just repeated it for me because he's kind. Um, I was just gonna say that um, more as a joke, obviously, but the action scenes clearly are like super, super fun. Um, so I will say he enjoys those more, um, but you definitely get like more smiles when that's happening, where it's like a lot more serious when we're working on something emotional. And then I think one of my favorite things about <laughs> Steve is like, if the scene calls for it, I've done several things where like, 
just like crying or emotional. He hates when his actors cry, but like it's necessary oh, yeah. for the thing. But after like a, a, a take, he's like, "Cool, if, if go be better." <laughs> you okay? I'm like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a scene. It's like it 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 is not. It it shouldn't be normal to just make people cry for no reasons. But that's part of our job, and sometimes it feels weird. You're like, why, why, why do I put those people in that emotional state? Um, so yeah, I feel a bit weird with that. He feels guilty. I think it's really sweet. Um, all right, so I was gonna try to give myself a chance to beat this boss, and then bring Jeff in because I think he's about ready. Oh, do you have a? You play with on PS4, right? Yeah. There is a feature where you can let a friend play the game for you. Get out of here. Oh my god, I need to look that up. And we can probably do it. We just we need to get... We might make that happen. You're definitely... No, but I have faith in you. You're gonna, you're gonna succeed. Okay. You're gonna uh, Thank you. build that. Thank you. Thing. Yeah, that too. You can do it. Susie's, Susie's just seen me do this before and die badly. <laughs> I did too. I also saw yeah, I, it. I always ah, try to Come on! There we go. Will do when I get um, a chance, Boo. Okay, ah. so I see a question that is interesting uh, from Rainforest Bird. Do you make a brainstorming in the beginning where actors can participate? I don't know if he means like before, uh, right before the shooting uh, or, or earlier in the, in the process. Um, it, it really depends on the project. Some projects you get to have the actors really early in the process, and you get you have time to do like script reading with them, and then because they're actors, they they know like how like how to tweak the words so they, they flow better, and then you get to um, uh, adapt the script based on that. Or sometimes you will cast. Um, when you go to audition and you would cast an actor, you will just like fall in love with it, with him, not in a romantic way, but just like uh, with his work. And maybe it's not exactly how you envision the character, but if it's early in the process, you can you can try to make that character fit this specific actor more. Um, uh, so yeah, it really depends. Uh, now, if he was, if you were talking about like right before the shooting, uh, yeah, usually there is, uh, there is uh, not always, but there is like some real sort day, days, day or days, uh, where you just focus on like going through all the scenes and trying to find the rhythm of the scene with the actors, and usually you do a lot of. Uh, 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 of uh, tweaks there with the lines and and, um, and and get feedback from the actors. So yeah, they're 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 an in, uh, integral part of the creative process. Um, Don't mind me. Hold on. Yeah, I'm holding. I hope. Sorry, I'm just super focused. But thank you. Yes, I second what Steve is saying. I heard. <laughs> I do have a question uh, about, like, do you have any control over, like, who the character faces are? Like, the face models? No! I mean, okay. Uh, again, depends on the project. Um, um, so, on that project, no. I actually discovered quite late that um, uh, Jill was, in fact, based on, like, a real person. Uh, Sasha was just like, just yeah. so lovely. Neither um, of us knew. Um, I didn't yeah. know until it like. Um, and announced. Uh, so people might want might want wonder why I wasn't aware of that. Uh, so just so you know, I'm not working for Captain directly. Uh, I'm working with them. Uh, but on this project, I'm mainly working on the on the cutscenes, and that's it. So um, again, depends on the project. When I was working for a, a, a CD project or a Quantic Dream, I was part of the team. Uh, on this one, I'm more of a, like a free agent. 
I would say. Yeah. That's really but, cool. uh, the, the collaboration with uh, with Capcom was so great on that one that we decided to work again, and that's why I'm I'm, I'm also doing uh, the the new one, Resident yeah. Evil Village. I got this. That's super exciting! I can't wait to see what you guys uh, work for us. Well, I'll take it. Um, I'm I'm almost there, guys. We're gonna. Cross our fingers. Got this. I knew you could do it. Go on. We're almost there. I've seen you do it already. You could do it again. I know. So is everyone else. They're all like, this isn't what we needed to rewatch. But Steve's terribly interesting, so I hope you guys are really enjoying this. I'm yeah. stoked that you would come and share some of the insights, because it's truly an amazing career. What's on my left? Oh, I see. This is on my left. <laughs> Noted. If David Cage made this game, the story will continue after Jean and Carlos dies. <laughs> yeah, that was a big <laughs> thing for us uh, back then. Do not like not to interrupt the, the, the story even if the character dies. But that's a very different way of making games and writing games. Yeah, I, I want to ask about that. Like, how's it? How is it working with Quantic Dream? They seem like such an interesting game dev, and the games they make are very, very narrative uh, heavy. And I imagine that uh, can be difficult sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I worked with them for nine years. Um, wow. And usually, in most video game companies, the game design is king, meaning oh, that. Um, six, six, where is it? First and, first and foremost, people uh, uh, devs are working on like how you play the game, and then like make it make it that fun, and then they add a layer of story on top of that. Uh, where at Quantic Dream, it all starts with the story, and then they try to uh, retrofit gameplay into that, uh, or try to think about the gameplay and the story at the same time. Uh, so it's just a different process, and it, 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 it creates different kinds of games. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we get to have like that many different experiences with uh, video games. That's what makes video games cool to work uh, in and to play. It's like, there's so many different stuff you can do. Yeah, it's very, very, coming. for sure. Just like having a linear Look story. Out like this one, and having a very free-form, open-ended experience like a Quantic Dream game, I imagine is very fun to get to work on. Just like all these different things. Yeah, yeah, it is different. Ah, oh. uh, I'm sorry too, like I, I... I don't know if you addressed it already, but like which... Which Quantic Dream games did you work on? I worked on Fahrenheit or Indigo Prophecy, as it oh was named God. in the US, uh, Heavy Rain, and The Two Souls. So you go back with the company. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I go back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I also did that little short film called Kara. Yeah. That uh, what is the inspiration for um, uh, Detroit? We did it. The community. So. Good job. Here comes a crane. Use it to climb up. I used to play uh, Indigo Prophecy a lot back in the day. I'll just say that. So this is pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't know. Come on. I didn't know. <laughs> that was my first game. I didn't okay, know that you did the it. short for Detroit. That's really freaking cool. I learn yeah. stuff all the time. Um, we have a, another, we have several other donations. I've been so distracted, but I did it. Yay. Um, this is uh, Ultimus donated. 20. Thank you so much. This is for lovely Susie. Hi, Susie. I have a major, epic, almighty crush on you. Seriously. Aww. Susie, you're amazing. <laughs> and you're loved. Patrick donated and said, Hey Steve, awesome to have you on the stream. I'm a film director and I'm just curious about how the different process is directing motion capture to traditional film. Major kudos, it's an incredible skill. 
I'm gonna have Steve answer Wait, this you, question, and then I'm gonna put the screen back up, and we'll bring Jeff in just for fun to come hang out and continue Ooh. chatting with us, if that's cool with so everyone. Exciting. Um, but Steve, difference between motion capture and traditional film? Okay, that's uh, that's an interesting question. So first of all, maybe a bit of background uh, for me. So I did, uh, I study, um, I did a film school, and my plan was to direct feature films. That's what I wanted to do. Um, uh, but then, totally by chance, I uh, uh, came across that uh, job offer for Quantum Dream. They were looking for people with a like a filmic background. I have to get that uh, back. To work on a on a video game, and I was a really uh, huge fan of video games, and it seemed to be like a, a nice bridge between both worlds. Um, and so then I started working for Quantum Dream, and then I realized that there is not much difference at the core of it. You're working with actors, uh, as you would do um, uh, on a film set, um, and you're placing your cameras, and as you would do on a film set, even though your cameras are uh, virtual. Um, and to me, at least to me, that's what, what uh, directing is. That's like telling a story through the actors and through the placement of your cameras. Uh, so for me, it was like, okay, I can, I can do exactly the same thing as I would on, 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 um, on the film, like creatively. Um, uh, but it's, uh, it's way easier to enter the, 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 the video game world than it is to enter the, the, the movie business. Which is so interesting because so because, many people feel different because everyone's path is so incredibly different. So for you, that's the case. Yeah. But uh, keep in mind, it was like 18 years ago. True. Um, that's true. And back then, back then, not a lot of people were doing uh, motion capture for video games uh, because there wasn't like that much focus on the storytelling part of it. Um, so when I uh, started, um, there wasn't even like a, a, a proper a job title for what I was doing. I think on on the um, the, the first Quantic Dream, Quantic Dream games, I'm still credited as assistant director because the the director of the game, like meaning like like all the the, the um, like the, the the guy who decides like how you play the game was David Cage. Um, and I was just directing the cutscenes, so I couldn't be the director in his in his mind, you know. Uh, but then later on, as people, um, uh, as more companies started to uh, uh, tell better stories with with better characters, I think we started to see like uh, um, like cinematic director role popping up and cinematic artists uh, role popping up, um, and. Uh, um, so yeah, sorry. The question was, I, I think I, I just the, no, no. There. Just the difference between uh, film and motion capture, which I feel like you yeah. you kind of addressed. Um. So yeah, I, in the end, I don't think. I mean, it's all the technical aspect of it, of course, is so different. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to wait. Like, if you're honest, you don't you don't have to wait for uh, uh, the the light to be set up and. Um, but at the end, it's just like, hey, get your get your actors there, uh, rehearse with them, work on the lines, uh, bl uh, um, 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 stage stage them. The thing I, I, I would say that is quite different from a, from a movie set is that often, not always, some people do it, but often, you don't have to care about the camera placement while you're shooting it. Yeah. Uh, you can think about that uh, after the shoot is done, and. And we're actually seeing nowadays more like uh, like heavy um, um, like like movies that rely heavily on CG uh, uh, take that approach where you know I don't care about the cameras on the set because we can always move it in the virtual space later on. Um, so that is freeing in a way, and for the actors too because you don't have to okay let's shoot that close up on you, and then cut and then let's shoot the whole scene. Uh, like the, um, the master shot with everyone there and then cut um, uh, or this coverage specifically lit up for that scene. We can just shoot the whole scene 
uh, all together and get in the flow. And then I'll just work uh, my magic with the cameras and the editing later on, um, like way later down the, the pipe. Which technically is just like okay. such a drastic, drastic transition. Um, yeah, it is, it is. We talked a little bit on the streams about just kind of the evolution of games in general as they start to value the narrative more. And clearly that's also mm -hmm. reflected in your career of just like kind of the respect and the responsibility that that comes with the cinematic director title as that has evolved with how important narrative has become in the games that we're doing. Um, that's basically just my summary version of all of the amazing information that you just gave. <laughs> Um, so, that being said, you guys want to hang out for two seconds? Jeff is here. I'm gonna oh, yeah, hey. try to Let's join, freaking try and join him in and make this a party. Um, admittedly, when I come back on live, I might have to do some live adjusting because this is legitimately not planned. Bear with me. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, be right back. We're back. They're all here. It all looks ridiculous, but hold on. I will fix it. Give me a moment. Uh, okay. Discord. I want those two, and I want this to go off. What am I doing? I'm getting this. Taking that off. All right. Yep. Yep. All right. You behind the scenes, everybody. We're gonna make it work. Making it happen. <laughs> Wait. Nope. Stay. Stay. All right. Okay. Look, look at you, Steve! You look great! You're in a box! That's you in a box! Huh. Wait, nope. Don't move that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. She streams, everybody. There's she streams. Glowing. Yes! Uh, I'm making you so big. Wait, wait for it. Wait, wait. Okay. Wrong buttons. I, I'll hit the right buttons eventually. Jeff? Nope. Steve? Yeah. Jeff! There he is! <laughs> we found him! <laughs> Ah, just What's look, okay? just look at that, look at that face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, what, what happened? Did you shave or something? Nice. I did, I had to shave, I had Small. to shave uh, yesterday actually, because I had to do face cap in my house. We're not doing that today. Oh yeah, someone is working then, good. No, uh, you know, we are live, <laughs> so be careful. No, no, it's okay. I know, I know, I know. But I, uh, I can't. I, can't okay. I was working. I just can't spell. Jeff, you're live, by the way. Everybody, we're live. Hi, hi. We have fixed it. I, I have, <laughs> I have made a stream happen live, and I get yes, amazing, done. We did it. <laughs> I can't believe that Jeff's window is the same size as everyone else's. I was trying to be nice. Don't worry, guys. It takes three I'm and a half seconds. I'm not, I'm not used to doing this. Uh, Don't worry. Prominently displayed. I'm gonna put you back there in your place. Kidding. I know, I gotta be careful. <laughs> Alright, no, I'm kidding. Alright, we'll leave you live. There, everyone's on. Amazing. Let's check chat. Hey, chat. Hey, Great. everyone. Alright, we're. G I'm gonna keep playing as we keep talking. Chat, keep sending in your questions. Susie, if we have anything else from Twitter, um, let me know. And guys, just a reminder to keep donating. All of the proceeds from this are going straight to BLM and the Innocence Project, so the donations are going to a great cause and very important and um we also get to see your questions personally and they'll get answered so um you have to go to the about page to find the donate buttons now apparently because everything sort of switched around on twitch i wasn't aware of that till i went live today um so if you're looking for it that's where they are the donate button with the little gray zombie hand is the donate directly to this stream where you can put a question and then those proceeds will be moving along there are also two direct donate um, buttons straight to blm and innocence project if you'd rather just donate directly and that's that i will continue Susie. Hello. 
Do we have any uh, questions now that we have more people? I see a question right here. What were some of the more challenging parts in creating this project, and what did you take away from them? Hey, Steve, you wanna you wanna start us out on that? Yes. Okay. What were some of the most? I mean, working in Japan. <laughs> That was challenging. Um, so I don't speak very good Japanese. Um, and most of the team at Capcom don't speak English. So we have a, um, tr a translator with us uh, uh, on the set. So that adds another layer to the communication that in sometimes it's... Uh, I triggered a cutscene, sorry. ...can be a bit difficult. It's done. If you want to see uh, me in the back scene, you but... son of a bitch. Oh yeah, I want to see that one. Let, you, uh, let me pause there. I like that. We shall make ours an ongoing arrangement. Now drop the gun! <laughs> oh man, the final thing looks great. Yeah. Have you not seen this yet, Steve? No. Have you, yeah, have you ever it looks seen good. anything so incredible? The data on this would be worth me. Oh, I remember that that look. Right. <laughs> oh. uh, you know how it is? Bad. It is about to explode, <laughs> and you can't put a price on life. <laughs> good luck, Nikolai. Joe, go after Nikolai. He's got the vaccine. What about you? We're running out of time. I've got this. I know you do. Oh, so spooky. Mm, I know you do. Just so you know, <laughs> makes me, that line makes me so happy. <laughs> See, that's another example of a line. On paper, I was like, nah, <laughs> it's not going to work. But it worked just fine. All right, um, let's so, on. what were we a lot of talking that, about? A lot of that, Steve, though, is a testament to how you operate a set, though which is like, you know, giving people the time to find those things, you know what I mean? And I mean that sincerely. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, the time. Though it really depends on the project, sometimes you don't have the time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, for sure. But yeah, it, no, it, it was pretty good on that on that, that, that one. We had like, we had like rehearsal days, we had like, the, the, the skitter was not crammed with like, Let's try to shoot 10 scenes a day. Um, so yeah, I'm glad we got the time to try to work those scenes and make them... Oh yeah. This is it. Cool down in progress. Please reactivate power sources. Is this the final fight? This is the, this is the ending. Yeah. It needs power. Look at that gun, dude. It's sick. Can I give you, can I tell you guys something? I'm getting that gun made in real life. Get it doesn't work the same way, but it's gonna be a prop. It's seven feet tall. That's you mean it's gonna, it's gonna shoot like a, a death ray? No. Um, okay. <laughs> and it's uh, only gonna be like four pounds, so. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the most challenging thing on that project specifically was just first getting used to work in a different country with like, um, like different people, different kind of men mentality, and learn about all that. Um, but in the end, I, I had a lot of fun on that project specifically. Uh, it wasn't that hard. It was also the, one of the, the first time I wasn't working directly for um, for the developer. Uh, so I also also had to learn about like how to let go a little bit uh, because I can't control as much as I can as I could if I were like working directly for uh, uh, for Capcom like being like like with the team so but yeah overall it, it was wasn't that that difficult of a project I, I'd say lots of very good people working on that project some of that, though, Steve, oh, by the way, back to, like, yep. you know, at the onset of the project, right? I remember I was talking about before about some of the casting mm -hmm. process, but you can sort of begin to ensure an easier workday when you bring the right people in from the beginning, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, we covered that a little bit, yeah, uh, early on. It's like just try to just bring like nice people where you you, you get a good vibe on this on the day. Yes, and you can you can work and have fun and still like make an amazing uh, an amazing product uh, product. Um, yeah, I don't really understand when I'm when, when I'm hearing about all those directors, you know, that are like tyrants on the set and just like work with like fear. Final, here and it is. I'm like, how 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 do you, how do you make that work? It's the end. Oh, you have to you have to walk the, the gun into his mouth. Oh, we're gonna walk the gun into his mouth. <laughs> I already gave the satisfying performance on this, so I'm just gonna let it be what it is. Come on! Next time, take the fucking hit! Yeah, I don't know one of those lines where I'm like, nah. But it works! It does. It works when you have an amazing actress playing Jill. Oh my god. Good riddance. Everything's so gooey, look at it. <laughs> it's so gooey and gross. Okay. <laughs> Um, we're coming up to that fight with Carlos. Uh, Vinti yeah. donated and said, Jeff, what's with you and Resi characters who names start with C and end with S? Yeah, Carlos, <laughs> you're so right. Also, Carlos. Susie, I'm looking forward to your upcoming videos on YouTube. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Got one coming very soon, guys. Also excited. Yeah, she was. she's actually taking a break to be here to moderate from what she's, like, diligently working on, so... I will um, say I have been writing while well, we've been streaming, so... You're amazing. <laughs> She's a multitasker. Carlos, uh, Jeff, have you seen this environment? Look how cool it is. It looks awesome. Right? It really does look awesome. You didn't get to see this end! This is this is your fight, right? You weren't with- no, yeah. For this no, fight. No, we were not together. Oh, okay. Let's- yeah, you get to see this too. This is both, I think- you may have seen it, Jeff, but this is definitely Steve's first time getting to see it, like, all... Yeah. So let's do oh, it, guys. So it's very good. So yeah, and with that fight, maybe we can talk about the process of how we record the face yeah. for the stunts, because I know you oh, guys yeah. don't really like that. No, we talked about we talked about it already <laughs> a little. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. <sighs> You're not going I... to stop. I saw a lot of memes using that specific scene. This, no! It's like Do you have any idea Capcom promising a DLC no, no. and then shattering the one stream. I also saw that meme and thought it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he throws, he throws the DLC on the ground and just... Me when you oh, I have seen that. <laughs> you want a DLC? No! <laughs> the internet always wins. <laughs> so, um... Oh, oh I gotta do something. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Shoot him! <laughs> I can't! I'll, I'll hit you! You have to! There's no other no way. way. There is another way. I could just not. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. I remember we struggled. We struggled with that line a little bit, and then we found the right tone. Yeah. And I think we nailed it, uh, Jeff. There. You know what's interesting? In a Carlos's world, that would just be too cool. Oh. <laughs> I love him. What about him? Does this pause? It does pause. What's interesting, Jeff? It's interesting. Oh, yeah. When when Carlos goes zombie in Jill's dream, he says the same line. Yeah. 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 Huh. And yeah, it's the only way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Shoot me, Jill. There's no other way. Yeah. <gasps> or it's the only way. So it's so, and it's her and... it's her nightmare. Like she has to do it, but she does it at the yeah. end. Like as the player, you choose to do it, which is really fun. I've seen people mm -hmm. bring up the fact that like she had no problem in her dream shooting herself when she turned into a zombie, but when Carlos in a dream turns into a zombie, she's like, I can't, I can't do it. And then this yeah. is like her facing that fear. So it's a lovely little yeah. narrative arc. Before you resume, uh, I want I want to try uh, backtrack to the question. I think it was Patrick who was asking about like the difference between uh, 
like uh, shooting, I... shooting like a, a film and shooting motion capture. I believe it was so Patrick. With that, yeah, with that specific scene, the fight. Um, so we shot the camera movement way later, and sometimes you just animate the cameras in uh, like on your computer. And sometimes you are actually shooting the cameras using like a virtual camera. Like basically, you're tracking a camera and you're seeing on the screen the CG characters, and you're like, you can move around. Um, if you were on a on a film set, you would have to um, um, uh, like stage the fight and like block the camera around it, and it's just twice the time to just get the the whole choreography. Like first of all, it's very complicated to get the the, the fight choreography right. But then you had to have, uh, add a layer of having the, the camera right and um, at the same time. So let's say everything goes right with the fight, but then the, the camera movement is fucked up. You have to reshoot the whole scene again. Uh, with motion capture, you don't have that problem. So it's in, in a way easier. You make sure your choreography is good as long as you have in, in your mind where the camera is roughly should be. Um, and then you can just work later on, just trying to nail that camera movement. Um, so yeah, just thought it was interesting to no, it's super elaborate on that. Yeah, super interesting. And then I know, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, I, I might've talked a little bit about this. Jeff and I think talked a little bit about this, but with you here as well, um, just, we were talking about how like for safety sake, for equipment sake, for timing, for everything else, we have these incredible stunt teams that come in and, and just kill it. And so things like this, like the fight, the stunt team does it. And we end up in trench coats next to them doing all of the facial movements as they quickly knock out this, this fight um, and, and like react to it. Right. And that's how we did this. Yeah. That's how Neil yeah. and Jeff did and, this. And, and, yeah, yeah, and there's different options for that. You can always just don't worry about the facial uh, on the shoot, then edit the scene and do that later on in a booth, like uh, with just like shooting the facial once you have the whole scene and see and try to re uh, uh, reenact. But on that project, we felt that it was you would get the better energy and it would be like more like in sync if we do that on the set. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a good choice. Yeah. Um, but really, it depends on the project. It depends on the team. It depends on the the, the 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 technique you're using for the facial animation. So there's a whole like lot of different techniques we can use. Yeah, which is super interesting. I also need to point out that Quantic Juliana donated fifty dollars. Thank you so much. Whoa! And thank just you. Just said, yeah, just wanted to send you guys some more love and appreciation. You're amazing. Thank you for hanging out with us and supporting an incredible cause. It's so great to finally see all three of you together together, um, after how much you guys have praised Steve in previous streams. It's true. We gloat on you, Steve. So thanks for showing up oh, and being thank us. Thank you, awesome. guys. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, it's really fun to get to, to kind of have you here. and He gets to fill in all the blanks because whatever he says, we're like, mm-hmm, yep, yep, mm-hmm. He's, he, he's allowed to say stuff. Um, okay, should we keep going? You want to see the end? Yes, yes. Okay. Here we go. I feel very at home, by the way, because I, I, I see Steve wearing stripes, and that makes me feel very comfortable. Well, I know. It. He's never not wearing stripes. <laughs> I'm very friendly. Also, you know I want to know what kind of pants you're wearing. <laughs> uh, oh, you, you would be disappointed today. Really? Even lifting the jeans. You've never disappointed me, but all right. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you get me out of here. I'll pay you whatever you want. Oh, the fish was so good. I know, that look is so fierce. I love it. Bye, guys. You'll never find out the truth. I was saying, it was finally I, I got to stood over Neil and, like, be in charge, finally. Which is really satisfying. Jeff, I'm glad you're here to see the, the ending stuff. Yeah. That was one thing that a lot of people in the chat room were... We're saying, like, it was just like, oh, we missed Jeff. Everyone yeah, missed you as soon as you left, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> was there a different uh, director for Resistance? Right. Yes, I wasn't involved in uh, Resistance at all. Yep. It was a different team, I think. Oh, I didn't know that either. Uh, there it is. Yeah. I 
took my controller off the table, sorry. <laughs> Wouldn't be a reasonable game if there, is, if there isn't an helicopter scene with a big explosion at the end, no? That's true. It's finally over. washed over us. All this death wasn't caused by a monster-making virus. It was great. Gotta have the monologue, man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I remember that monologue. I decided then and there, the ashes of Raccoon City would be Umbrella's ashes too. Like, how many versions were there once for that one? There was several versions. I mentioned this the last time. It used to be like way longer, and we recorded mm. like a a quieter a uh, quieter. What am I saying? A like a shorter version. And I feel like they cut a few things out, and it ended up with that, which I really like. I think it's really strong when it's succinct. Oh, uh, there is an interesting question from uh, Let's Survive Perry Plays. Yeah. Um, so, Steve, do you still stick to traditional shot types that you would have learned in film school? Or with the freedom cinematic directing gives, do you get a bit more adventurous? I would say when I first started, uh, I was like, it's a bit overwhelming the freedom you have because you can do anything like with the cameras. But the thing is, we've been watching movies for like 100 years now and we don't really know what, know it like but we have like an understanding of the rules of how movies are made and uh, if you deviate from those rules too much it often doesn't work for 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 the audience so definitely i'm trying to be to think about the the my cameras as like how would I be able to do that in the real world? Um, uh, instead of just, oh, let's just put the camera wherever we want. Um, and so, yeah, and the more, like the older I get, the more sim like, simple my uh, 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 camera work and edit becomes, I think. Because again, the most important thing I think is the performance of the actors. And sometimes if you get too fancy with your camera work, uh, you're just losing that. But also, sometimes you want to have fun. So, it's a balanced act, again. This is something Neil said on, on Neil's stream yesterday that I joined him on, was just that Steve, in so many ways, is such an actor's director in a, in a wonderful way, and you don't always see that. Um, because lots of directors come from, from different areas and have different kind of... Uh, focuses and they're required to bring a lot and know a lot of a bunch of different departments and that's something that we as actors really love about getting to work with someone like Steve um, is they care about performance a lot and that's something of obviously that, that we value thank you guys <laughs> as the as the like guitar like sappy strings start coming in <laughs> Yeah, that was the perfect music for that little speech <laughs> right there. That was perfect. I'm just making a music. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, we made it to the end, guys. Again. We did it. Again, did. which I, I love. Watched, I watched you beat this game twice. Whoa. Yes, you did, Susie. Wow. So, um, did you guys watch the PS5 um, reveal? What did you guys thought about that? I thought the I'm 
I think the design of the PS5 itself is really interesting and different. And I, I mean, yeah, I, I like it. I don't know why. I see a lot of people online being like, "Oh, this looks ugly." I like it. I mean, look, there was only really two options, right, at this point with next gen. They either they either yeah. committed and sticking to it's just going to be a black box that disappears in your house, or <laughs> they go for like something that's a little bit more interesting that possibly could sit instead of inside your you know your console stand mm -hmm. on top of it that you maybe wouldn't mind looking at. Um, so I thought I, it was cool, I, and I like that there's a digital version as well. Yeah, the, the yeah, non-digital version I, I, has a I, nice I'm, curve to I'm it. I'm legit <laughs> thinking I'm gonna go for the digital uh, uh, version, because I'm like, I haven't watched a Blu-ray in years. No, me neither. So... Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> these, are all, these are all possibilities. Uh, speaking of, there's the cinematic director, Steve. Mm -hmm. Namely. English voice director Steve Kenevey happened to just pass by. Oh, yeah. So, see, I'm, I'm under uh, Digital Frontier. Um, yeah. Um, because that's the company that hired me, and they're working for Capcom. They do a lot of, of, of cutscenes work for a bunch of different games uh, against you. They work with uh, Square Enix, they work with Nintendo, they work with. Uh, yeah. So, they, they do CG, CG movies too. Yep. Super cool. Um, I saw a question that said Nicole, something about a... oh that clenching voice you do for Jill. Is that a conscious decision? Wow, this music is so loud. How do I turn it down? <laughs> it's a dope '80s guitar riff. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, can you hear us still? I can't hear it myself, like, but it sounds like it gave me the soundtrack for Over the Top. All right, this we're just we're gonna lean into it. We're leaning into it. Um, original somebody, credit somebody song. Was it really, Susie? This is the original <laughs> yeah. credit song? And they fully remade it. Like, it didn't have this badass guitar, it was just a piano the whole time. Amazing. So they made it, like, really epic. Love that. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, oh, the question was, what clinching voice you do for Jill? Is that a conscious decision or a byproduct of you getting into a character? I don't know about clenching, but there is definitely <laughs> just, like, an authority to Jill that Nicole might not carry in her own personal life. So I definitely do have just a general, like, I'm gonna stand up tall and, and strong, like I could carry a gun and actually shoot people. Um, and, and so, yeah, uh, also at the time of shooting it, just like her, her age, her authority, it just kind of naturally gravitated to that more, ah, I don't know. <laughs> of course, it's all kind of conscious, but it's also part of getting into a character. How do you clinch? <laughs> uh, this is very dangerous. <laughs> I, I, I have a question for Steve, actually. Is there still anything about when, when you first... You're getting yeah. drowned out by guitar, so <laughs> talk loud. <laughs> <laughs> when you get asked to do a project, or when you decide you want to do a project, I mean, what's the what's the first thing you do to begin that process? Once you've made the decision, uh, you mean like, sorry, uh, what do, what's the first thing I'm doing, like like work wise or no? Like, so is, are you like I you know I, I I read the script four times through and I'm already thinking shots, or are you thinking I'm already trying to picture who I want to cast, or I'm already picturing like. Do you know what I mean? What oh, okay. For you? Uh, so, again, it really depends on the project, because uh, when I was working at Quantic Room, for instance, um, often the project would just like, let's say, like uh, in between Fahrenheit and um, Heavy Rain, the time to get to Heavy Rain, it was just a, a lot of iteration about like, we I went like, we thought about a whole different like game first that then become became heavy rain. So there's like that process was like very diluted and, and very long. Mm -hmm. So that that was my straight way into the game. Where uh, as opposed to when uh, say I was hired for the um, to to direct the the, ex the the Witcher Tree expansion packs. Then I'm coming into into a, uh, onto a project which has a, like a rich world with a, like a very well known character. There's already a game. 
mm -hmm. uh, is based on books. So the first thing I was I, I did was uh, played uh, 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 the Witcher games, uh, read the book just to try to uh, get me into the um, into that world. And the same thing with uh, Resident Evil. When I, I got the, the, the job, I just, first thing is, I just like try to rewatch uh, um, uh, all the cutscenes from the old Resident Evil just to get a feeling of uh, uh, where the franchise was. Because mm -hmm. I've been, I, I played, I think I played all of them, maybe except the number six, I think. Um, Very understandable. Uh, don't look at my C <laughs> ranking, guys. Okay, that was that was a different that was a different playthrough. That was a random random ranking. I'm just oh, going yeah. back to the start screen. Hey, you know, you got C um, C for cool, right? So so yeah, super cool. This and then and then usually when and it was the case on Resident Evil Three when I uh, I was hired, the script was still in the process of being written. So, um, uh, but we. We did like had the, the the old game as a basis to start mm -hmm. with, so uh, there was a bit like uh, I was also involved in like uh, the discussion around like the, how to write those scenes. It was good, um, and as for like trying to de to define the characters, like find the characters in my mind, it's like. I think, like, I already told that I like working with uh, with uh, uh, actors um, that I already work with. So, whenever I read the script and I, I get the characters, I'm, I'm trying to see, like, do I know someone who would be great for that part? Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't find anyone, so then I chose Neil. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you gotta settle. Uh, and there was just Neil. You gotta get him in there, you know. That's funny. Uh, no, and, then, and immediately I was like, "Whoa, Neil would be a great, great villain." And if I could uh, bring back um, um, uh, William Hope, um, he would make a, a for a great um, uh, be higher. Um, but then for the other parts, like there's so many options out there. Uh, yeah. That you don't want to have like a, and it's it, it's also the case for every other aspect of the of the of the work. I don't want to have preconceived ideas about uh, the cast, and also often about like what the scene is. When I was younger, I used to really prepare like the the scenes before going on the set, uh, to the point that then I would be locked into my own ideas. So nowadays, I try to uh, get like a chiller approach, mm -hmm. uh, where I just cover the basics, the basics in my mind, and I allow me to get surprised on the set working with you guys. But that, that only works if we have time to work with the actors on the set. So we need real souls, which is not often the case. Yeah, I noticed that about your process, though. But you, so you so you would say your process has shifted as you've like continued to work, like the way that you approach yeah. scripts and shooting. That's cool. You did, yeah. I, I mean, I did notice obviously with working with you, you seem to have a very like um, a very in the moment sort of directing style. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's difficult to get to that point because you need to, like confidence. Because when you mm -hmm. when I first started working as a director, uh, um, cinematic director you kind of have the feeling that if you don't show that you're directing, if you don't give notes, then you're not doing your job. Uh, but that's not right. Sometimes you guys nailed it in one scene and there's no notes to be given. If it works, if something is not broken, don't, uh, what's the saying? If it works, if it ain't broke, try to fix, fix it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you have to have that confidence that no one is judging you because you're not giving notes. You know? Yeah. That's that makes sense. Comes with, it comes with experience. I feel like you've also yeah. said in the past, like part of one of the positive things of being a good director is like you intentionally pick actors that you know are gonna come in with choices and like decisions and whatever else, so that your job can be, you know, tweaking and playing and making sure it fits in the context, not having to, you know, do inordinate amounts of work with them on set um, yeah. so that they fit the role. 
Yeah, and 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 my job is not to have the best ideas. My job is to like uh, find the best ideas, and often they don't come from me. They come from uh, you guys. The, I don't know. Like on that that project, there was a lot of people from Capcom on the set. There was like Cho San. I don't know if you remember. Is uh, the uh, the art director on the on the yes. set, and he had like some very interesting ideas. And if it's better than mine, I'll happily like. Uh, I want like, to show off his work. He's he did did all the drawings, right? Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. But you have to have a real removal of ego to be able to navigate it. I might have way I might have showed this before, but I actually have. The art director. Working nine years with David Cage would remove your ego. What? Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Wait, I can't. I, mean, I, I, can't, lo it's I too love bright. him, so it's just like a, a t tiny pun, but. There we go. Uh, no, and, 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 uh, and actually, people who worked with me back then would say that I had a huge ego, and probably I, that was the case. Uh, but definitely, yeah, I worked on that, and it's way easier to let go of your ego uh, on the set. Uh, then it needs to try to like put it in everyone's face. Right. Yeah. Um, so yes, chat. That is that is Chosan's. Uh, he drew us as just people um, for fun, and it's actually yeah. like on the back of. Let's see if there's anything important on here. On the back I of have a one, call sheet. I have one too. Show it, <laughs> Jeff. Do you still oh, have one of these? Absolutely, I have yeah. mine. Uh, I think it's in my office. I'm pretty sure it's in my office. Um, Steve's got one too, but he was so awesome. He was like doodling yeah. these while we worked. Go, yeah, let's see it, let's see it. Great. That sums up Steve. He always had coffee. Always. Always. <laughs> got a direct <laughs> with coffee. It's on my fridge. Mine's on my whiteboard. Um. Hello to puppies. Um, yeah, what were we talking about? Also, I just want to say hello to the two other people that donated. O9 Havoc Worm donated again. So thanks for joining, Jeff. Hope everything's going well. Um, and Dark Anderson X donated and said, Nicole got a C for Nicole. <laughs> hey. Uh, I don't want to be judged for that ranking. By the way, I did, I've started my speed run, as you can tell, of this game. I'm just zipping through it. Um, that's what this version of the game is. I'm kidding. Um, um, Nicole. Yeah. I'm gonna jam and let you guys wrap up. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Can I, can I Steve one question before I go? Definitely. We're. I think sure. we're about to. We've been on for like many, many hours. So thank you everyone for hanging out. Yeah, I just want to let you guys wrap it up. But I. But my last question for Steve is like, is I. I, I actually be curious since we work together. What would what's like? What would be like your dream project if you could work on anything? Or what's like the next evolution of, of like Steve? directing where do you really want to like what do you want to <laughs> do you know what i mean like what do you want to sink your teeth into because i just think you're such an interesting uh, guy and you're so artistic <laughs> and, and i'm so curious like i just want to know what you want to do i love when jeff is here he always has the good questions this is true ah, you have to be on all my streams uh, okay uh it's, it's a tough question so sometimes i get a tad frustrated by um like working in video games you have to deal with uh, the gameplay part of it, and you have like you have a scene, and then in the, this character needs to end up in that specific position because it needs to bring back to the gameplay, or um, or uh, we can't tell the story of that character because uh, this way because then it makes the scene drag too long and gameplay wise it's not working. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it can get a little frustrating. So. I wouldn't mind going, like, doing another, an, uh, having another shot at um, an interactive movie like um, thing, kind of like what they did with a uh, Bender Snatch on Netflix. Mm. It's still, it's still gamey enough, and that I think I, I have like something interesting to bring with my experience of like branching narrative that I got from. Um, uh, from Quantic Dream, but then I don't have to deal with all the gameplay BS, mm -hmm. uh, and I can focus <laughs> more on telling the story. Uh, so the, actually, before I moved to Japan, I, uh, the, the project I was working on with uh, with Neil was kind of like that, but it was a very small project, uh, the Paint of the Apes uh, interactive movie, right. and I had a lot of fun doing that because I felt so much freedom because I was controlling every aspect of it. Uh, 
like nobody played that game because like marketing was just awful and it was marketed as a game it's not a game it's an interactive story right it's experience. but i had so much fun doing that so yeah that or i don't know working like working with a naughty dog would be nice yeah uh because those guys are really like invested in telling good stories yeah um and i like their approach where it's like whatever whatever you, they need to tell the story they'll do it if it's just like oh let's have this dialogue while they're working in gameplay because that's the best way they'll do it if they need a three minutes long cutscene they'll do it yeah uh if they need like a specific uh like gameplay tweak where you just have the the the, the, the character stuck in a place and you can control the camera that will happen only in that part of the game because that's the best way to tell the story here they will do it and I feel like often uh, uh, developers, they just like stick to their guns. They're like, okay, we're just making like a game. So uh, every cutscene has to be like uh, less than 30 seconds because then uh, 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 people get bored. And I understand that, but I, I'm, I'm actually the guy who's keeping cinematics in most video games. Um, I'm a bit ashamed of that, but <laughs> if you tell a good if you tell a good story, people won't be skipping your cutscenes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think when you look at the like the, when you look at the trifecta of things that like comprise the game, right? And you're always having to juggle the priority of, you know, storytelling, gameplay, and then like sort of graphic fidelity. And I agree with you where I think it's really cool that Naughty Dog seems to prioritize consistently story first. And you know, I think it, I think that that's really the cornerstone of any good interactive experience, whether it's film, television, or games. Um, I guess that's just a long way of saying I totally agree with you. Totally agree. And, <laughs> and also agree. Uh, can I yeah, say? Yeah, but mostly. About, I, uh, yeah, this sure. game? Sorry for interrupting, but I just want to say, like, I've replayed this game like a billion times already, and like, there are certain cutscenes in this that I just can't skip because they're so awesome. Like, just the direction. The focus of the story super focused, and I think that it definitely stands out. Like that, that is one thing that so many fans have. Susie, uh, do you have a favorite scene in RE3? What? What? I Thank do. You. Thank you. I do have a favorite scene, and it's the final scene where when you fight building Nemesis <laughs> with the railgun. Like that is just so amazing, and just you know, uh, Carlos saving Jill at the start. Like I just love that. Just, yeah. Hey, fuck. <laughs> you know, that kind of yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I just wanted to put that out. Well, just, chat, thank, thank you out. so much for, for coming on. Do we have any other final questions? Because I think I've kept you all long enough. I really appreciate Steve getting up. Jeff, thank you for coming and joining. Susie's yeah, making a YouTube video it's right now. Fun. And um, yeah, it's been super great to hang out. This has been really, really fun. I uh, will hopefully come back maybe next week streaming something else. Uh, we'll see. Probably going to keep playing and, and chatting with voiceover actors and directors and hanging out. So um, thank you all for being so wonderful. Thank you so much for all of your amazing donations. Um, means a lot. Yeah, and with that, you, final thoughts? It was fun. It was the first for me. I really liked it. I hope people enjoyed uh, hanging out with us. I think they did. Jeff? I would just say, I, I would just say uh, um, genuinely, truly, uh, thanks to Steve, because none of none of us would be sitting here talking without him. So nope. um, I feel like eternally grateful to Steve, and uh, thanks for letting me crash. You guys are the best. He's the reason that we're here. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, Jeff. All of that being said, I do have to do the final pitch and push at Suzy the Sphere Hunter on basically everything. Definitely go check her out. Follow her. Uh, Steve Knebley, he's got a website. Steve, do you have any other places that people can find you that you wouldn't mind them heading to, or is the website the best place? Uh, no, I'm in my Instagram, maybe. Uh, yes, his Instagram is at Megasteve. Very cute. Um, go check him out there. Jeff Shine, everybody. We know we love and adore him. So make sure you're following him on Instagram and Twitter. And we will see you all next week. So much love, everyone. Thanks, Later, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.